it. So at this point, the only thing left to talk about is the walls. Walls on this game got a little bit more exciting because now you can save your tornado attack until you get there. In Tekken Tag 2, you could do that. You could save your bound attack until you got to the wall, then do the bound and tag assault and all that good stuff. In Tekken 7, you could not. Your, your screw attack, you had to use that in the open. Well, now it's back. You can splat them to the wall, still use your tailspin, and then get an ender, right? All that good stuff. So let's take a look first and foremostly at what the enders are because the juggle counter still exists. So if you do something like a three hit tornado, you're not gonna get the whole string, right? That stuff is gonna miss. So you gotta conserve your hits, so to speak. So let's look at the best possible enders first and then go backwards from there. So I'm gonna use forward, forward, two, three to wall splat each time. So after that, you can do back two, one, four. That breaks the balcony should you need it. Forward, forward, two, two does the same thing. One extra damage in the balcony break. Forward, forward, three, three plus four. That first hit will break the balcony. The second hits will break the floor. So you do if you don't want the wall break, you don't want to do that. Forward, forward, three will break the wall, so watch out for that. But the second hits break the floor. Very nice. Uh, for just straight up damage, you can do white hair and dance. One plus four, two, four. That kicks them out sideways a little bit, which is weird, but it's there. You can also do this new string. Down back, one, one, one plus two. This is supposed to be a wall break, but in this situation, it will not. I'm pretty sure they're already on the ground. By the time that last hit connects, doesn't break the wall anymore. Out in the open, it will break the wall. That's your wall splat, boom, broken wall. And the last option, a little bit tricky, is back to one into Miare instead of Genjutsu, and then two. Look at it again closely. See, I missed if I hold it too long. There's a Miare stance in there. It's fast. You just hold it for a brief instant. As soon as she stances, you press two. It just does straight up more damage. Miari two is a nice chunk of damage. So that's a pretty go-to damage ender right there. That's it. Those are your best wall enders. If you want to break the floor, this guy. If you want to break the balcony, that guy's probably your best shot. So you can do a, a tornado after the wall splat if you want to. I would highly advise just doing a single hit tornado. One, because you get all of those enders, you don't have to change anything, and you get a ton of damage. So you can do this, down forward four, boom, and all the enders work, including this, just like that. You can do while standing three plus four. I think it's kind of hard to actually do that reliably. It's not worth it, it's the same damage. So it's just there for style points. Uh, Sidestep two works but it will shift you sideways a little bit. You could use that to your advantage. If you get like a slightly crooked wall, then you could use sidestep two and realign yourself if you want, a little bit extra damage. And the most damage comes from down one plus two, but again, costs your health. So if you don't want to spend health, down forward two is good. And it's just a great looking kick, it just feels good. Always feels good. So I would totally recommend those and not ever bother with doing like a three hit screw attack. Right, you're just wasting hits. Your options are pretty limited. At that point, like the only thing that you can do is four, four, two, two. And that's less damage than all these other options. So I would stick to single hit. Either down forward four for no power or down one plus two to spend power. And that's it. Uh, another interesting option it shows you in like the June trailer gameplay video or whatever is to use the new hot kick. You do that. And then you basically press two. You wait a second for them to fall a little bit. Right now. And then you press two and you get unscaled damage at just the right instant. Eh, I mean, it's cool, I guess. It's flashy. You don't have to really bother with doing that. I think it's a lot easier to just do the down forward two and do it manually. As far as breaking the floor or the wall mid combo, it depends entirely on where where you are at that point, right? If you spent eight or nine hits to get to the wall and then you break it, you don't have a lot left. Pretty much your yellow ender and that's it. You might even have to just do like one hit and call it a day. Something like forward, forward, one plus two and then hit them. Because there will be cases if you do forward, forward, two in the stance, it won't reach. There'll be, the juggle counter is way too high and they go flying, so be aware of that. If you, even if you break the wall, you might be out of hits and not have anything left to do. And whereas the opposite is true is if you hit them immediately, if you hit them you know, at the wall and then do this stuff, 
then break. You've got a lot of hits left. You might be able to do a full red combo down at the bottom. It's hard to say. Same with the bouncy situation from explosions or whatever. It depends entirely on what got you there. So that's why I think the peace approach is useful. You know that if you've done it like mid combo, oh, well, I've got, you know, some, some combo left. Let me do just the blue one and be done with it. Or let me try to squeeze in the whole long green combo, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's up to you. You got to learn what, what is left, how long your combos are. And you kind of notice in some cases, some of these combos that are 11 hits, you kind of have to space that last one out a little bit just right. So you can feel they get further and further away with each hit, how that would reflect under wall combos. All of a sudden they just get punted away. You gotta be aware of how that works.